welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa spoke this week after receiving a briefing from ESCOM as to why it resorted to stage six load shedding on December 9. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss some of the takeaways as well as the outlook for the electricity system in 2020. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What was the President's main message and was it enough to restore confidence? Well, I think the main message is that government is fully aware of the crisis at Eskom and in the electricity system as a whole and that there are certain levers that they're prepared to pull both within Eskom and outside of Eskom to try and restore or stabilize the electricity system in South Africa which has now been a fundamental risk to the economy for over a decade and uh, the levers are quite cosmetic inside Eskom it was issues like uh, cancelling executive leave over this period and trying to uh, investigate also uh, issues of why uh, some of these failures took place over the, over the last couple of weeks. Um, but, and then outside of Eskom to try as cabinet to come up with uh, some s immediate solutions to uh, restoring the balance in the power system. We have a deficit now that the RP says it's about 3,000 megawatts and what uh, the president announced this week as 5,000 megawatts in the system immediately. Um, and the cabinet will be meeting to discuss options for closing that 5,000 megawatt gap to give Eskom breathing space to do the maintenance it requires. And I suppose the, the message went down like a lead balloon. Uh, I think that the apologies don't wash anymore uh, the actions being taken, as I said, are seen as cosmetic and not fundamental. And uh, the platform that was created to maybe announce pulling of some of the levers outside of Eskom, especially to get the uh, uh, independent power producer programs going again, as well as the small scale embedded generation, which is uh, mired in red tape, moving, uh, weren't pulled immediately. Now that those by the end of the week may be pulled, but I think that you know the, the I think society wanted some firm decisions on this, and uh, therefore I don't think it was enough to restore confidence. What are some of the options as cabinet prepares to discuss an emergency power plan? Well, the, the immediate options are really to try get the uh, well we're going to burn more diesel that will keep the lights on and that's very expensive. And Eskom battles to recover that in the form of the tariff because the regulator doesn't see it as a prudent, uh, prudently incurred cost. So that's, that option, that window is closing every, uh, all the time because Eskom's financial position is, is so bad. And then the other options would be to restore the units, which I think we will see a restoration of the units. Demand is going to plummet as factories, mines and everything go on the, 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 the holiday break. So we are going to see a stabilization in the immediate term, but over the sort of uh, short to medium term horizon, which is really the next three years, there are a number of uh, interventions that can be made. Now, unfortunately, it seems cabinet's going to be distracted by uh, the, the high regret, high cost options, which would be the, for instance, the burning of more diesel and bringing in things like power barges, which I think even if you were to pull the trigger on that, that's going to take many months anyway. Uh, you need to do uh, different environmental studies to do that. And I think really the immediate lever is there's this pent up supply of uh, estimated at 2000 megawatts that, uh, of self generation that people are prepared to invest off their own household and business balance sheets to, to secure up their supply and to clean their supply. I mean, a lot of businesses in South Africa cannot, uh, you know, are trading internationally and they're under uh, immense pressure to start cleaning up their act and uh, our dirty electricity is a problem for them. So we have that immediate lever that needs to be pulled and that really is to first uh, unravel the red tape around the very small scale, which is the one megawatt, which at the moment is we're supposed to have this very uh, liberalized regime of registration rather than licensing. But even that is taking t far too long within the, the NERSA system to get those power plants going. Then from the one megawatt to 10 megawatts, again, it's supposed to be a liberalized, there's supposed to be a wave, a deviation from RP that's supposed to be liberating that. Again, it's being mired in NERSA re red tape. There's a lacuna though from 
10 megawatts upwards. And that's where I think there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, a lot of the miners uh, have got projects in the 10 megawatt to 50 megawatt space. They, mm -hmm. They're very keen to, to invest in those projects. And those projects can really come in in, in a sort of a period of 12 to 18 months. They, they're small, they're nimble, the, uh, the finance is available, and we need to unwind the red tape and close that lacuna. And it really can be closed very quickly because the uh, integrated resource plan of 2019 has a column in it which caters for 500 megawatts of uh, other generation that can come in uh, annually. And in fact, for the period for up to 2023, that's become an open-ended allocation that we could raise that to 2,000 megawatts a year if necessary. I'd, you know, so the, there is scope. It requires the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy to just, with the stroke of a pen, create a ministerial determination to unlock that lacuna. And, and I think a, an, a process of streamlining the, the 1 to 10 megawatt at NERSA, really, it should be an online application system. It should be taking weeks. At the moment, we hear it takes 9 to 12 months. It's totally unacceptable. And, it's, uh, and that is the lowest hanging fruit and one that the president and the cabinet need to intervene on. And then obviously, if we had been procuring at the pace that we, we had from 2011 of around 1,000 to 2,000 megawatts, a year under the renewable energy program, there would be no 5,000 megawatt gap. So we need to get the utility scale uh, procurement programs going again. Again, uh, again, the IRP is there. All it requires is uh, determination, Section 34 determinations from the Mineral Resources and Energy Minister promulgated and promulgated immediately so that the IPP office can begin the procurement program. Then, of course, we can have this uh, RFI uh, request for proposals for emergency options on both the demand side, management side, and supply side options, and there might be some good ideas. And already we've seen some good ideas. Uh, for instance, uh, there's a threshold on how much the wind uh, energy plants can pump into uh, the system in terms of their PPAs. Just release that threshold and give them a very uh, marginal tariff to cover the costs of that additional supply. I mean, the Wind Energy Association said that we 40 cents a kilowatt hour. There's nothing that can come in cheaper when we're paying over four rand a kilowatt hour for diesel. So, you know, do don't do the easy stuff. Uh, get the, get the procurement program going again, and then you can apply your mind to if there's a, still a gap of 5,000 megawatts or whatever it will be, then uh, to more expensive, high regret probably options like power barges, but don't put those first, you know, you, so, uh, so I think there are a number of options that the cabinet can release from Friday onwards and we can start moving. It's not going to close the gaps immediately. The immediate gaps can only be closed by burning diesel and by fixing the units at Eskom and there we can see we're vulnerable for some time. What is the outlook for the electricity system for 2020? So for Eskim, it's more of the same. It needs to find space uh, to maintain the plant. The plant is now 38 years old on average, if you exclude Madupi and Kosile. So it needs space, and uh, so we need to start injecting uh, new uh, sources of, of energy and capacity. And that's going to take time. So we're going to be vulnerable for so, uh, from, a, from a supply side perspective to dipping back into load shedding from time to time. Whether uh, at times when there's uh, unpre well, there was unprecedented loss of capacity, 15,000 megawatts on the 9th of December. That <laughs> that is unprecedented to lose that amount of capacity. We need they need also to start stabilising the the new units at Madupe and Kosile, but again that's going to take time. So I think we're going to be from an Eskom side, an Eskom supply side. It's going to be another year of vulnerability. But from an electricity supply industry perspective, 2020 could be a very exciting year. If they just pull those two levers that I spoke about, the small scale embedded generation lever and the uh, utility scale um, uh, procurement programs, whether that's renewables and probably the gas to power program, there's going to be a lot of investor interest, there's a lot of appetite, and there'll be a lot of activity I think in the electricity space. That doesn't obviously give us the relief we need straight away. That's we're going to rely on Eskom. But that relief, 
once it does start coming in, including through the, the bid window for projects coming online, maybe earlier than a, a first projected, that's one of the options uh, for immediate supply, you know, that will start creating the space for Eskom to take these units down, not for uh, quick repairs, but for proper midlife maintenance, which uh, Eskom has indicated requires months of, of downtime, and they just do not have the space for that. So it's going to be another tough supply demand year, I think, because there's nothing that can close the gap immediately. But it could be an extremely exciting year in terms of getting us back onto the right pathway of regular procurements. If we had just stuck with regular procurements, we would have the gap and uh, the energy gap that we needed. So the breathing space that Eskom needs to uh, uh, maintain the plant. And once we have that secure electricity with a good reserve margin, investment is not going to be m as much of a constraint as it is cu currently. Because if you are a miner or a large uh, investor, one of your first questions is, is there going to be electricity? And is it going to be stable and reliable? So this is a weight on investment. A weight on investment is a weight on growth. A weight on growth is a, is a weight on um, dealing with our fundamental problems of unemployment, poverty, and uh, inequality. So we really need to get this electricity, this urgent burning uh, platform issue under control, and 2020 should be the year. Thank you. That's the Second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next year for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.